Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you my backpacking sleep system. Let's go! Getting a solid night's rest is important to your health both on and off the trail. And at the foundation of good sleep is a good sleep system. In this video, I'm going to share with you the sleep system I've dialed in over the years that's working really well for me. So before we even get into that, what is a system? A system is a set of things that works together to get something done. A sleep system is more than just gear. It also includes where and how you set up your tent, what you wear when you're sleeping, and it also includes anything else you might use to help yourself fall asleep faster. Getting a good night's rest on the trail can be challenging at times. And the goal of this video is to share my experiences with you to help you improve your sleep system. Before we start talking about gear, let's talk about the importance of selecting a good flat level site for your tent. Now I've been out there backpacking and I get to the place I'm going to camp and I quickly set my tent up on what looks like a flat spot and it turns out that it's not. This can be a real pain because you find yourself sliding into the side of your tent the whole night and it's just hard to get a good, night, good night's sleep that way. What I suggest is getting nice and low and just kind of making sure it is perfectly level because what looks like a slight amount of tilt when you're standing up can end up being a lot more when you actually lay down on it. I also suggest doing a quick inspection for roots and rocks like shuffle your feet over the area to make sure there's nothing poking up there. I have sent my tent up and then it feels like I'm laying down on a socket wrench or something because there's a big root or rock underneath my sleeping pad and then either you got to just live with it or move everything. Now let's talk about the gear that I use. I use a pretty simple setup. It consists of a sleeping pad, a silk liner, a quilt, and a pillow. The first item is a sleeping pad. There are quite a few different kinds that you can use, and I've gone through a bunch of them over the years. But what I've settled on is the Thermarest Neo Air. This is pretty popular out on the trail. You see quite a few people using it. A sleeping pad is important because obviously you want the cushioning because it's much more comfortable than the hard ground. But if you're using something with some insulation value in it, it can actually protect yourself from getting the heat drawn out of your body by the ground. The ground is cold and will actually make you cold and can even give you hypothermia if you're laying on it all night long. My pad is pretty lightweight at 12.6 ounces and it's durable as well. I've been using it for years and have really put it through some rough times. It did develop some pinhole leaks um, this past season, but that was really my fault from putting it down on some pine needles and sliding around on it when I shouldn't have. And it was very easy to fix too. When I got home, I sealed it right up and it holds the air really well now. One complaint some people have about the Neo Air is that it's a little bit crinkly, uh, but what I found is that over time from rolling it up and unrolling it, it kind of softens that up a little bit and it's really not that big of a deal in my opinion. But having a good sleeping pad is essential to getting a good night's sleep. Next, I have an optional piece of gear that I use, which is a silk liner. You don't have to have one of these, but I started using it a little while back and have really enjoyed it and will take it with me on all my trips now. I use the silk liner in one of two ways. One way is I will slide it over the top of my sleeping pad, kind of like a bed sheet. And what that does is it makes it a little bit more comfortable and also keeps my smelly skin off of the sleeping pad itself. The second way that I'll use it is if it gets cold out at night, I will pull it off of the sleeping pad and I'll climb in it kind of like a thin sleeping bag and then pull the quilt over the top of me. What that does is it adds about an extra 10 degrees or so of insulation value to my quilt, which allows me to sleep much more comfortably on those cooler nights. It's pretty easy to clean the silk liner. You just toss it in the laundry with all your other clothes and it comes out nice and clean. The one I use is a Sea to Summit silk liner. It's actually a combination of silk and cotton. No special reason I got that combination other than the fact that it was the only one they had on the shelf when I bought it. And it weighs in at 5.4 ounces, which is a little bit of a weight penalty, but totally worth it to me for the versatility of the product. Next is your main sleep covering, which is going to be, in most cases, either a sleeping bag or a quilt. I used to sleep in a sleeping bag, but a couple of years ago I made the switch to a quilt and I really enjoyed it and plan to continue using the quilt. Now this is purely up to personal preference. There's nothing wrong with a sleeping bag. There's nothing wrong with a quilt. Either one is just totally fine. It's just whatever you find 
most comfortable. Hike your own hike, as they say. I have two quilts. The first one is a Thermarest Chorus HD. This is a very lightweight summertime quilt, only good for when the temperatures are gonna be above 50 degrees or so at night. Now up north where I live, there's about three nights a year in the middle of August where it stays that warm. So I don't get to use it that much. Most of the time I use the Enlightened Equipment Enigma, which is a 20 degree quilt, which is pretty versatile. And I use it anywhere from, you know, say 45 degrees at night and down below that. The way I use this is I use the straps on it and I attach it underneath my sleeping pad. And what that does is it holds it in place throughout the night while I'm sleeping. Cause sometimes I shift around a little bit and it makes sure my quilt doesn't fall off so I stay warm all night long. Having that quilt staying in place, I think is pretty important. And finally, gear wise, there's the pillow. I've tried several pillows in the past and have settled on the Sea to Summit pillow. The other ones were either too big or not comfortable or too thin, but this is one I really like using. A lot of people opt not to go with a pillow, which is fine because I think what they do is they use their clothes bag. I actually use my pillow and a clothes bag. I need two things. When I sleep at home, I've got like four or five pillows around me. So when I'm on the trail and down to two pillows, boy, that's really rough in it. The thing I like about the Sea to Summit pillow is it's pretty light at 4.2 ounces. It's quick to inflate and also it washes up real nice when you get home from a trip and it's a little bit dirty. Now that you have all your gear, the next question is what do you wear when you're sleeping? For me, I generally just sleep in my underwear and you might think, well, don't you get cold? But in my opinion, it's really more of a less is more kind of thing. What I mean by that is if you wear a couple layers of clothes, you're gonna to start to sweat. And then when it gets chillier at night, that sweat's gonna make you cold and colder than you'd be if you were just sleeping in your underwear. If I ever do start to get cold at night, I can always adjust. For example, I can throw on a stocking cap, some socks, maybe a long sleeve t-shirt. If it drops into the 20s, maybe I'll even throw on a base layer on my legs to keep warm. The point being is it's easy to add layers throughout the night if you get cold. This is one of those things that's probably gonna take some experimentation on your part to figure out what temperatures you start to get cold at and what you're gonna to wear to be most comfortable throughout the night. There's one more element of my sleep system that I wanna share with you that I just started doing this year and it's really helped me a lot. Just for some background, when I first get out to the trail, the first couple of nights, I always have a difficult time falling asleep. And I've heard other backpackers say the same thing. And I don't know if it's because I'm excited to be finally out on my trip, or if it's because I'm going to bed earlier, or because I'm just not in my normal bed. Whatever the issue is, the first couple nights, I do have trouble falling asleep. So what I've started doing is taking a half of a Z-Quil gummy. Now these have melatonin in them, which will help you fall asleep, and it doesn't leave me feeling groggy in the morning. This has made a really big difference for those first couple of nights on the trail. And after maybe three, four days, I don't need to use them anymore because I kind of just get in that rhythm of going to bed earlier and getting up earlier. Now you probably want to test this out at home before trying it on the trail for the first time, but it might work for you. So that's my sleep system, a sleeping pad, silk liner, quilt, and pillow. In addition to that, I like to have a nice flat spot on the ground. I like to make sure I'm not overdressed so I don't sweat at night and also a little z -Quil melatonin gummy to help me fall asleep when I first get out there is just the trick. This system is something I've dialed in and changed a lot over the years, but I've really got it where I want it and it's really working well for me. And I'm hoping that maybe you picked up some tips in this video that can help you dial in your sleep system as well. And as always, if you found any value in this video, please smash that like button. And if you enjoy outdoor kind of stuff, backpacking, hiking, that kind of thing, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and we'll see you out on the trail.